So let's talk about Martian Blueberry real quick. <laughs> yeah. How did you how did you say how did you say to yourself, I is is an animation studio is something you always wanted? Yeah, Didn't come I mean, later on down the line. Well, you, you know, we just always had a problem with finding studios that knew how to handle the culture, you mm-hmm. know, from, from the very beginning. You know, when, when I mean, look, some, some of the artists that we were using were they were, you know, they were overseas in Korea or Japan, so there was already a language barrier. Then the cultural barrier is even a whole nother thing, right? Um, mm-hmm. and, and a lot of the artists that we started out with were domestic, but they just didn't understand what we would what we're doing, you know. Because the, the, these characters and the jokes that we're telling, they got to be, you, the visuals have to be right. Like, you know, so so what would end up happening is I would act out almost the entire episode of every single show. You know what I mean? Because, mm-hmm. you know, because a pit named Slickback, when you watch him and you see those little, those nuances, the way he moves and the way he talks, that's because I was, they you know, they recorded me on tape acting all this stuff out. Ah. You know, so... <laughs> And, and that's just because most you of the say studio, it together. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But that's but that's because most most of the studios they, they just didn't have enough. It was just wasn't enough of us in these studios to really understand it, right? Okay. So so it's always been a need, and 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 you know. So and I've been in the game. It's been like eighteen years, man. So I felt like you know I, I've been to enough studios to, to know how they run and understand. You know what I'm saying? Like the, the needs of the studio. But then also we have a unique opportunity because I've I've connected with so many black artists around the world, mm-hmm. and here's an opportunity to bring them all together to be able to produce stuff at the level of authenticity that we that we need, right? Um, but it's but I just want to make it clear, like so, Martian Blueberry is is strictly you know an animation production service company, so we're not mm-hmm. we're not actually creating original content out of Martian Blueberry. We're mm-hmm. just providing services for people that are you know what I'm saying that need animation. But mm. that is you're, our, you're, our you're the you're the black American version of what you had what you were doing overseas. You're domestic. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I tell you, because you know, when we when we when we first did the boondocks, if you notice in the show, Huey never ever smiles. Mm-hmm. You'll never find one frame where Sir Huey smiles, but that was done intentional. Sure. That was done intentionally. We didn't we didn't want him to smile. But when mm-hmm. the boards were coming back, when we were looking at storyboards, they had Huey smiling all over the place. And no matter how many times we told them, they still would they still would do it, right? And so mm-hmm. one, one day we had a Zoom with the studio in Korea, and and they said, you know, look, we just don't understand because he's a kid. Like, how come he's not smiling? Mm-hmm. And and so Aaron said Malcolm X, and they went, oh. oh. <laughs> 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 but that's the only way that they understood the mindset of Huey, mm-hmm. and, and so, and that's and that's just someone who is iconic like Malcolm X. So, mm-hmm. you know, you think about some of these other characters we have in this world; they have no idea what who any of these people really are. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, so yeah. This is this is one of these things, and we talk about it. We talk about it on the on this platform plenty of times where we have to be the voice. In the room, we have to be. We have to build that table so we all can eat. There's room mm-hmm. for us for us all, but our stories need to be told, you know. Yeah. And there's there's people out here. There's people of color, people uh, POC creatives who don't get seen, who don't get heard, mm-hmm. have a massive amount of amount of talent, but they don't have the doors to kick open. So we have to build that door. We have to bust that door open and let them see, hey, you missing out here. And when you have stuff like Black Dynamite. The boondocks, the jellies, you know, these are these these are products that we adhere to and mm-hmm. we understand and we and like, this is why these shows were hits, you know. And when they're like like I said, when we seen the boondocks and seen where it was going, we were like, I think we're we're here now. Yeah. <laughs> like we, we, we can get away saw, with some stuff. When you saw Samuel L. Jackson and Charlie Murphy having a conversation. You did not see two white characters. You literally saw Charlie Murphy and Samuel Jackson having a conversation. To see Sorry. this, even see them, who was it? To see Charlie Murphy, mm-hmm. <laughs> to see them with cornrows, and I'm just like, but this is Charlie Murphy and Samuel Jackson. Yeah. That's what makes it so funny. Yeah. 